Uh, you know, the reason I haven't been drinking as much in the most recently, recently, it's because the Honey Jack hasn't been on offer. And I don't drink anything as fast as I drink Honey Jack. The, my opponent this evening is going to be appearing with a white background, so I thought I'd appear with a black background. It's like chess, isn't it? Dress it up, subvert it, deny it all you want. You are a peach, Julie. An absolute one! <laughs> I, do you know why your video is so unpopular? It's already apparent from the title there. Marriage can never be feminist. You've defined marriage as the institution to be judged and feminism as the institution to do the judging because reasons and you don't understand why this offends married people so as you wish Julie I will dress it up and subvert it <laughs> but I will not deny its its essence. I, I'm going to alter your opening statement so it makes the same exclusionary statement but swaps the moral magnetic poles as it were. Let's see who gets offended by this. Dress it up, subvert it, deny it all you want. Feminists can never be married. Do you understand why that's offensive to feminists, don't you? Yeah, who is anyone to tell feminists what they can and can't do? Or which institutions are above them? And that's precisely what you're saying to married people. That their institution cannot aspire to the moral superiority of your institution. And for that kind of shenanigans, Julie, you will get the same response from most people. Be they married people or engaged people, or unmarried people, and even anti-marriage people. They will all put their circumstantial differences aside to chant in unity, we don't give a three-legged doggy paddling fuck about what is and isn't feminist. Your institution's machinations have no bearing whatsoever on our ethical conscience. And we give even less of a fuck what you as an individual feminist think. Yeah, laugh, point, ridicule, give the finger, get on with life. But I think I can give you three minutes of my time, Julie, because I suspect those three minutes are going to be rich in wrong. Rich. And very, very wrong. Like, like a Christmas pudding made from salted clag nuts and drool. <laughs> All right, I'm going to draw that now. Marriage is an institution that has curtailed women's freedom for centuries. Okay, we've got a refrigerator, a gas stove, indoor plumbing, electricity, and a vacuum cleaner. This, to Julie Bindle, is an image that represents centuries of curtailed freedom. Either she couldn't find an image of the 19th century workhouses that industrially revolved us into implicating these kitchenware innovations in every domicile in the country, or she couldn't find any evidence of married women ever having it harder than married men, or unmarried men, or unmarried women. Uh, do you know why they're called spinsters, Julie? Because in those days, women had two main sort of branches of choice. Uh, the institution of marriage, or the institution of spinning cotton until you die. Some might say, 
Julie, that marriage is not the option of those two which curtails the most freedoms there. I, I, some might say confinement to a musty, flock-filled room for 16 hours a day is worse than confinement to your own home for as long as you feel like. For women, anyway. Uh, for women, marriage often meant you don't have to go to the mills anymore. For a man, marriage meant you now have to go to the mills until you die. And still does, by the way. Unless you're exceedingly lucky enough to find a woman who won't put you on that particular hook. But instead of rejecting the patriarchal and outdated tradition... Like men do. Some feminists have decided to reclaim it. Yes, men don't want to get married, but feminists do. Which makes no fucking sense at all! If it's an institution that benefits men. It would make perfect sense if it's an institution that steals money from men and gives it to lawyers and occasionally women. We may have progressed since the Industrial Revolution, where Mary Wollstonecraft is- Yes, hello, Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> I always knew you were a gender-fluid Time Lord. Describe marriage as little more than a state of legal prostitution. Bitch, don't you dare speak ill of prostitution. Prostitution is when two or more people make an honest exchange of goods and currency. And it's been going on since the invention of currency. Possibly even just before. Marriage, however, is when you take two people who are in love and you go, right, that means you, sir, have to fuck off and spend your daylight hours in a room you hate, and you, madam, have to complain that your house is too small. Or too large to keep tidy. Yeah, yeah, that's not prostitution. It's not even slavery. Because no one benefits. <laughs> it's just a cruel and unusual experiment. Yeah, marriage was invented a few thousand years ago and introduced to a species who's been raising families for millions of fucking years. Very successfully, come rain or shine, come ice age or tropical jungle, we somehow figured out how to train self-sufficient adults every generation without the aid of any state ceremonies about fucking love. And then, after millions of years of this, some fucking quacks came along and said, it's impossible to raise a family without marriage. And everyone went, what the fuck is marriage? Ah, oh, it's, it's, it's this abstract concept we've invented. You wear a metal circle around your finger to symbolize your submission to the government and its rules. And you can't possibly love each other. And you can't possibly raise a family correctly unless you've got that metal circle on your finger. Did you read this on a cereal box or something? I don't know what you're talking about, mate. This is ancient Babylon or some shit. Yeah, well, it's, it sounds like the kind of fantasies in which ch children will indulge thousands of years from now yeah, as a doting attempt to get them to eat grains. Are you saying marriage is an affectation of the agricultural revolution? Like Adam and Eve? Why, yes. Yes, I think I am saying that. I think marriage was considered part of a necessary condition for the agricultural revolution. In much the same way, the nuclear family was considered part of a necessary condition for the Cold War. Only considered, mind you, in both cases. And I'm jolly chuffed that we rather poetically linked it all up with cereal, with the imagery of a young... 21st century child staring with amazement at a small plastic toy and the information on the cereal box it came in eerily foreshadowed 
by an image of a Bronze Age farmer staring with amazement at the emergent technology of a box of cereal grains. And this reflects the quantum entanglement of marriage and cereal. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like a scene written by Douglas Adams and directed by Stanley Kubrick. Fuck you, I'm fantasizing. <laughs> now, I think that nicely illustrates the the fey amiable childishness of the id spirit that followed us into this technological adulthood. It's very well observed, actually. Thank you for that input, Macaulay. <laughs> but let's not kid ourselves. Even today, marriage is not about equality. It's about perpetuating male privilege. <laughs> I, d again, Julie, I am doing my part for the cause by not getting married ever, anywhere, under any circumstances. Certainly not to a woman. <laughs> yeah, if, I get, if I get married to a man, I'm safe. I've got my next of kin, my emergency contact, my tax break, everything. But if I marry a woman, then... Divorce lawyers will look at me and salivate. <laughs> look at the cartoons. They'll imagine me as a roast chicken in the shape of a dollar sign. And they'll see my wife as the dog who will dispose of the bones. So, no, I'm not going to sign up to fight the fucking lions one day. Not interested. And guess what, Julie? I'm not alone. You know who else is rejecting marriage, both in practice and in principle? Millions upon millions of men! Is it, is this institution, which, which supposedly is about perpetuating male privilege, is of little to no interest to men. An ever-growing list of men. Either, for some reason, they're all completely unaware that a complimentary institutional privilege is being offered to them for nothing. Or you have something rather topsy-turvy, Ms. Bindle. Which is more likely? Being given away by your father may seem cute and romantic. If you happen to have one. Lucky you if you do. But it stems from a time when women were seen literally as their father's, and then their husband's property. And a man was seen as his mother's property, and then his wife's property. Uh, equally obscured statement, therefore equally true statement. Except, in the small detail, this is still the case. Unlike what you just said. We are presently living in a time in which even though a man cannot legally force a woman to do anything, a woman has total legal power over the actions and residences of her children and their father. If half a problem from the past is such an issue for, for you, Julie, how do you feel about the entire fucking pie of a problem that is happening in the present? The majority of brides still opt for a white gown. Beautiful. Yes, indeed. But the implication that brides should be virgins is both ludicrous and insulting to women. Before birth control existed, you can see why it made sense. If your only option was to be prepared for the very real possibility that your first fuck will be your first pregnancy, you want to be in a stable place before you do that. So we developed a moral code for women being sexually pure and men being sexually corrupt. Unless officially declared otherwise by the state and or in the eyes of God. And what we should have done, with hindsight, was drop that moral code when we achieved complete unilateral birth control for women. But we didn't. We appear to be quite deeply and severely addicted to this moral code. Even now, after this whole switcheroo, where women can fuck whoever, whoever they like, whenever they like, and chemistry will sort them out. But for men, the first fuck they have can mean their first 18-year slavery contract, and no one's even fucking preparing them 
to be in a stable place before they do that. In fact, they are shamed for not doing that as early in their adolescence as possible. And now, now that we've turned our evolutionary playing field upside down, now would be a brilliant time to discard this ancient moral code and to recognize that men are not inherently sexually corrupt and women are not inherently sexually pure. But no, people like you, Julie, are not willing to discard this code. As a matter of fact, you are quite willing to discard everything else in the universe except the myth of female purity. Uh, if the myth of female purity is the last thing left in any flake of any cloud of any metaphysical universe, that will be your win state for like two seconds before you think of something wrong with it. That a female who has had sex is somehow spoilt goods goes against everything feminists claim to stand for. Fantastic, Julie. In that case, I'll mock and deride men for touching too many vaginas and I'll laud and congratulate women for all the dicks they've satisfied. Will that go towards everything feminists claim to stand for? Is that what feminists have been doing for the past century, Julie? They've been going around saying, don't worry, men are sexually pure. They don't corrupt women at all. Is that kind of thing your bag, Julie? I know feminists who've taken their husband's name because they say it's easier. Easier than changing your passport, email address, utilities bills and bank account details, I suppose. Have you ever been married, Julie? If not, and even if so, then I should remind you that when a woman tells you about her lived experiences, you are to listen and believe. <laughs> or is that just an optional rule? A rather conveniently relativistic stipulation. You know, when, when a college girl says I was raped by an entire frat house on February the 30th, you must believe her! And publish a national article about it and start expelling and arresting innocent male students at random. But when an adult woman says, I love my husband, she's obviously brainwashed. And you're so obviously not. <clears throat> I'm never prepared for your face, dude. You're basically being branded. Oh, that's better. So anyone who sees your name knows immediately who you belong to. You have the option of taking his name. Just like you have the option of taking his house. But no, you're being branded with that name you decided to take from him. And I suppose you're being stabled by that house you decided to take from him. And you're being milked by all those children you won't let him see. And all that money the government's forcing him to give to you, that's, that, it, it's, that, that's treating you like an object. That'll do, yes. Even if a woman does away with all these traditions. Even if the institution of marriage is definitively cleansed of all its sexism, yes, go on. Accept it. Marriage can never be a feminist act. I, one more time, Julie. Nobody has to accept shit from feminism, not shit. It has formed the backdrop to women's oppression for centuries, and it continues to do so. Then why, <laughs> she's talking about marriage, not feminism, <laughs> I know. <laughs> then, if it has formed the backdrop of women's oppression for centuries, then why do women need to be convinced not to get married while men need to be convinced to get married. And that's the wrong way around. Observations have not just disproved the theory, but inverted it. Are all these people ignorant, Julie? Do they all want to live in upside down land? Or do you? Forced marriage. Is also forced upon males. As is the work they are obliged to do as a husband. Child brides. Children getting married? Shit, we should make that a crime! 
right after we make it a crime for women to rape children. Polygamy. P polygamy? Shit! That explains why millions of unwanted men are being discharged out of the Middle East. Because they hate women! All show how human rights violations of women and girls all too often go hand in hand with marriage. And all the more often go hand in hand with feminism. Did you enjoy the vagina monologues? Did many other women enjoy the vagina monologues as well? Then don't be too surprised if you get good raped by a woman. It was not until 1991 that rape in marriage was made a criminal offence in England and Wales. For men, it is still not a criminal offence for women. Marriage or no marriage. There's very obviously some vital information you're missing out on your assertion there, Julie, suggesting that a man could rape his wife and get away with it in 1990. Very fucking obviously not true. As practically as untrue as being allowed to shoot a Welshman with a crossbow in York, York City Centre at noon. But I'm taking a different angle. To this very day, Julie, any woman can rape any human being and she will not be charged with rape. This is true both in practice and on paper. Well, we recently began presenting Parliament with a petition to rectify this legal inequality and make rape a crime which any genitalia can be charged with. The government's response was along the lines of, but, but, but that's not how we like it. We like only charging men with rape, and according to the way we like it, men are the ones who get charged with rape. So, if so facto, vis a vis for Q, la la la, we're not listening. But thank fuck men aren't affected by any systemic institutional discrimination. And today, it's still perfectly legal for a man to rape his wife in 47 countries worldwide. Nice. Now give me a list of all the countries which never convict women of child rape under any circumstances. Hint, it will be quicker to list the ones that do. If you want to get married, then just get on with it. But please stop pretending that because you're a feminist, it's some kind of subversive statement. <laughs> well, ah, yes. To be fair, I've never met a feminist who doesn't act like a duplicitous, emotionally manipulative sophist. But at least some of them have an ounce of honesty in them, Julie. A fragment of conscience. They can at least look at modern marriage, something that gays, lesbians and interracial couples of all stripes can now do. They can examine it and honestly not find any details which force or coerce women into anything. Therefore, it can't be sexist. <laughs> I mean, there's no other kind. Of, there's, there's no other people in the equation who can be forced on coerce and on a patriarchy. They don't quite live in reality, but at least they're still in flatland where nobody's getting oppressed. Certainly not the men paying for children they can't see. But you, Julie, you went right through flatland a long time ago and you took root in upside down land. There is not even a pinhole in your fucking shutters. Not a shard of light is ever cast onto your worldview. A man can get raped by a woman and then forced on pain of rape charges into a shotgun marriage in which he is forced into wage slavery on pain of jail time. And that, to you, is the backdrop for women's oppression. Uh, yes, it is, Julie. And you're standing on the other fucking side of that backdrop. The show's going on without you. And you're in the dark, delivering your crowning soliloquy to the fucking rigging. No one can hear you except a very bemused stagehand crouched off to the left who came here to smoke a joint and cry. Hello, Julie. A strange glance this is, no? I love Snoop Dogg, despite his woman-hating lyrics. Bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks. <laughs> well, that's very big of you, Julie. Okay, so a small pinhole has formed. Nobody is allowed to appear to be in any way sexist, except Snoop Dogg 
and you. And if you love Snoop so much, why don't you fucking marry him? <laughs> I t incidentally, disreputable ladies are not excrement, but strumpets and ruses. It's not woman hating, it's true. But I don't pretend that listening to him is a feminist act. There's no such thing as a feminist act. Because no act is defined as feminist until its result is confirmed as good. When male scientists developed a birth control pill that didn't work, and you know they were bullied into marketing it anyway, and it just made women sick, that was the patriarchy inhumanely torturing women for its own nefarious ends. And feminism had nothing to do with it. When that happened another couple of times, all patriarchy, nothing to do with feminism. But when male scientists finally made a birth control pill that worked with few side effects and was cheap and easy to produce, that was a feminist act. And feminism did it. All by itself. The actions are not defined as feminist. States of being are defined as feminist, and only when they are considered a good think. Yeah, Bible thumpers will claim everything good is God and everything bad is man and Satan. And they will claim that all of Western civilization owes its moral values to the fucking Bible. Every religion will claim it's responsible for everything good about the agricultural revolution. While blaming men for everything bad about the agricultural revolution. <laughs> and feminism will claim it's responsible for everything good about the industrial revolution. While blaming the patriarchy for everything bad about the industrial revolution. Religions, be they secular or supernatural, never do good things. They just steal the glory of the good things and disavow any accountability for the bad things and morally posture over the microscopic characteristics of the people who actually get shit done. You are the parasites that will inevitably grow in an intelligent social species. In an environment where everyone is presumed to have a modicum of self-awareness, the most powerful people are those with no self-awareness because they're already under the radar. This is like the first person to discover lying was most probably the most powerful person in all of history, but it you know, probably wasn't a single individual who discovered the phenomenon of lying. It was almost certainly a collective. Studying another collective. And women should stop pretending that marriage is anything other than a tool for their own oppression. Yeah. And just trust in feminism. Because unlike all the other ideologies that did fuck all except divide people and piss them off, feminism is not just a tool of oppression. Anyway, as the late human rights lawyer Paula Ettelbrick said, marriage is a great institution, if you like living in institutions. And some people do. So they choose to live in an institution that has a track record, like marriage. On the other hand, feminism is a shit institution. It is literally not suitable for anyone. Not even the mentally challenged or the physically disabled. I would not send my worst enemy to die there. So someone could kill my whole family in cold blood in front of me, and I would, I would still consider it a disproportionate reaction of me to, to, to make them spend a single day in the institution of feminism. Electroshock therapy is a picnic in a hemp field compared with this shit. That, you know, men all over the world are having their health, their wealth and their life expectancy sucked out of them by the institution of marriage, while women are having their agency erased from history by the institution of feminism. And to you, Julie, that is marriage benefiting men and feminism empowering women. Flatland is not good enough for you. You can't just smoosh everything into a grey area where, where it's all just fine whistle whistle, nothing to see here. You need black to be white and up to be down. 
And you are not dangerous, Julie. You're sick. The conglomeration of people listening to you is dangerous. The fucking Guardian is dangerous for platforming your sickness. <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying the other feminists were right to deplatform you. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if the excommunication of transphobes is a true feminist act or just a pretend one. So, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm no scriptural scholar. I'm, I'm saying there is no appropriate platform for this shit of yours. I accept maybe a platform rising out of a sewer grate on the poised fingers of a homicidal clown. Or a platform of stuffed and rogered woodland fauna sewn together into the shape of a menstruating statue of liberty. Or a column of calcified guano and bat abortions lining the collapsed maw of an abandoned salt mine. Can you taste it, Julie? Can you taste the salt? Can you taste the bat abortions? It's bitter. It's high in MSG and you should feel bad. Oh, yeah, I am done. Wait. Oh, I am done. <laughs> this is as close as I'm willing to get to marriage. The, the blunted cutlery of Damocles. And I don't even like this. Don't even pretend to stick a fork in yourself for the sake of a pun, folks. Because I already did that joke just now. <laughs> and if you're going to hurt yourself, at least be original. I, you, ideologically shooing away your sense of agency does not count as original. Not one iota. Been done to death. You are its death rattle, Julie. And it's like the death rattle of a snake. It moves no one. In aught but fear. Good riddance in advance, just in case I die tomorrow. Anyone could die at any time. Especially me. Lunchtime doubly so. <laughs> so long. Thanks for all the fame.